We've started with fitting lines, arguably one of the simplest and most standard things to do, linear regression, least squares estimation, you will hear it referred to in different ways. And it may seem like that's a fairly limiting uh, uh, methodology in terms of, well, fitting a line, but what if I wanna fit something more complicated? Well, least squares is not, in fact, limited to lines. In fact, it's only limited to models that are linear in the unknowns. So for example, Fitting a parabola here is, has three unknowns, A, B, and C. The parabola itself is nonlinear, obviously that's not a line, but the model itself is linear. How do I know that? Because I have an A, which is the unknown, is multiplying X squared. Sure, the X squared is nonlinear, but it's just some number I'm multiplying the A by. And then I'm adding that to B, unknown, times some number, plus C, unknown times nothing. So a model is linear if the unknowns multiply only scalar values, and of course are not squared or taken the log of or taken the cosine of, and then summed all together. And so when you have linear models, least squares continues to work and is a beautiful way of fitting, in this case, what we're gonna fit is a parabola to a bunch of points. So let's work through the math and then we'll work through an exercise with some code. Let's always go back to the beginning. It's always really good to, to do everything from the beginning. Don't try to cut, uh, do any shortcuts at the beginning here. So let's start with what we wanna minimize. Delta i is going to be the vertical distance between each y coordinate and the corresponding model. So let's go back over to here. We have our parabola, of course and we're simply going to ask for every point here, what is the vertical distance in Y relative to the underlying parabola? Good, so what is that? Well, the parabola at a point, X, I, Y, I, is the Y coordinate associated with that is A, X, I squared plus B, X, I plus C, and then I just wanna know what, how, what is the distance to Y, I? I'm going to take the square of that. And then of course what I'm gonna do is sum all those up and I'm going to now define my quadratic error function, E of A, B, C. So we went from one unknown to two unknowns to three unknowns, and now I have a quadratic error function that is linear. Notice here that the A is multiplying things that I know about, scalar value. The B is multiplying things that I know, scalar value, and the C is all alone here, not causing anybody any trouble. That is a quadratic error function that is linear in the three unknowns, A, B, C, that parameterizes the parabola. All right, now, we could have played the same game. I could have written this out, done the cross multiplication, compute three partial derivatives, solve for all three, but I don't wanna do that. First of all, I don't even wanna do the cross product here because of all the terms, and I certainly don't wanna compute the partial derivatives. So let's write it in matrix form again, because if we write it in matrix form, we're gonna get that same clean solution that we saw for the slope and intercept. All right, so the game here is isolating the unknowns. What are the unknowns? A, B, and C, the parameters of the parabola. All right, what multiplies A? X squared. What multiplies B? X. What multiplies C? Nothing. So I'm gonna put in the first row of this X matrix, I'm gonna put X1 squared, X1, and one. So again, the X1 squared multiplies the A, the X1 multiplies the B, the one multiplies the C. AX squared plus BX plus C, that's what's in my error function. The next row is gonna be the next data point. X2 squared, X2, one multiplies this, and of course I'm gonna subtract that from Y1, Y2, all the way to YN. This should look familiar. What did I have before? I had exactly this, just throw away that first column because my model was BX plus C, MX plus B, for example, in the previous one, minus Y. So all I've had to do is add an extra column here, an extra element here, and this looks pretty similar. So what, what is this gonna be? This is an n by three matrix times a three by one vector. What is that gonna be? n by one minus n by one. What is that vector that is the result of this? It's all of the individual deltas, exactly what I have here. And now what I'm gonna do is take the transpose, multiply it by itself. That's the same as the vector norm squared. And now I'm going to have my quadratic error function in the same form. And go back to the previous segment, and if you don't remember it, and look at this, it looks exactly the same. E of u is equal to vector norm squared of x u minus y. That's exactly what we had when we did slope and intercept. 
What's the difference? The only difference here is that x is now n by 3, and the unknown is 3 by 1. But from the point of view of computing the derivatives linear algebraically, nothing is different. Now, I can't visualize this error function because I have three parameters and then what the error is, so that's a hyperparaboloid. So I'm not going to, but I will tell you it is a hyperparaboloid. We're going to compute where the derivative is equal to zero with respect to A, B, and C. And we're going to do that by simply differentiating this in exactly the same way we did before. The derivative of this error with respect to the unknown is equal to the, the three partials, that's what I want, which is what? Nothing has changed. Bring the two out, x transpose, x u minus y, that's equal to zero. All right, the two can go away because it's, it's, we're, we're setting this equal to zero so I can divide by two. I've got x transpose x u minus x transpose y by multiplying this out is equal to zero. All right, let's do the algebra again. What is x? n by three. x transpose, three by n. The product of those two is three by three matrix. Square, excellent. What is u? 3 by 1. That's the unknown, of course. One more. What is x transpose? n by 3 times a. Sorry, x transpose is 3 by n times an n by 1. That's going to be a 3 by 1. 3 by 1, 3 by 1. The matrix algebra works. I can, of course, bring this x transpose y over to the other side. Now I've got a square 3 by 3 matrix here. I multiply by the inverse on the left, and I get my solution. By the way, this is exactly the same solution we got when we did slope and intercept. U is equal to x transpose x inverse times x transpose times y. The only difference here is what has been packed into x. x has an extra column here with the x squared terms, but notice how beautiful this generalized. I added a whole a different model, it's a parabola, a different number of parameters, but the actual optimization, once we wrote this out in matrix form and figured out what x and y and the unknown is, Everything else is just turning the crank in exactly the same solution. In fact, you don't even have to turn the crank. This is going to be your solution for any model that is linear in the unknowns where you want to optimize, or minimize rather, this quadratic error function of the vertical distance. All right, let's write some code. This is going to be an exercise. I'm going to give you some scaffolding for the code, and I'm going to ask you to fill in a little bit of code right here. Write some code, please, to fit a second-order polynomial to n data points, what we just saw on the previous slide. Import some libraries. I'm going to generate some data for you. So I'm going to have 20 data points. That's n right there. You can play with these parameters, by the way. I'm going to pick some random values for x. Okay, So there it is right there. And I'm going to set the y values to be sort of parabolic. So I'm going to pick a random coefficient a times x squared a random coefficient b times x, and a random coefficient c. Now, that will be a perfect parabola according to a, b, and c. So I'm going to add a little bit of jitter, a little bit of noise. So I'm going to add a little bit of noise here to the y coordinate just to make your job a little bit harder so you can't cheat and only pick three points. Not that you would. Now, you're going to write some code here. I'll come back to in a minute. And this is going to be the visualization to show you the data points and the fit. Always, always, always look at your data, look at the fits. Don't look at some numbers and be like, yeah, that looks about right. The best thing you can always do is visualization to see what is going on with your results. And so what I want you to do right here is to write, I think it should only be two lines of code to do least squares estimation of the three parameters, A, B, and C, that optimally in the least square sense fit the parabola to the underlying noisy data. So what do you have to do? You have to build the matrix X, you have to build the matrix Y, and then you have to compute X transpose X inverse times X transpose times Y. And your solution, so that this code below uh, works, should be the, uh, you should define the variable U that should be, if everything worked out right, three by one, U sub zero, U sub one, U sub two, which will correspond to the square term, the linear term, and the constant term, and then this code should work for you. So be careful of the order in which you build that matrix. It should look like before. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you. Uh, take a take a, pause the video right now, and then when we come back, I'm going to show you the solution. All right, as promised, uh, two lines of code. Um, it may have taken a little bit more depending on how you built these matrices. So I'm going to build my matrix X. I'm going to stack um, the square of all the X coordinates x1 squared, x2 squared, up to xn squared. Um, x, those are, that's a linear term, and then a bunch of ones. So I've got x squared, x, and 1. 
and I'm going to pack those into the, this axis equals one says to put them into columns. So this matrix now is all of my X terms. I've already got my vector of Y's. I don't have to rebuild that. And now I've got my least square solution. It's X transpose X inverse times X transpose times Y. I, of course, Im imported inverse from um, uh, NumPy Lin algebra uh, here. And now I'm going to simply plot the data points and I'm going to plot the, 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 the fit so I can see what's going on. And you can see you get this nice uh, fit. Least squares estimation, probably one of the most powerful and should be absolutely in everybody's toolkit. You should be able to for anything that is linear in the unknown. So we've done this for fitting a line in a parabola, but you will see this in many, many different places in computer vision, least squares estimation, where you have a model that is linear in the unknown. By the way, the homography that we did earlier is sort of like this. We had a linear system in the homography parameters, H1 to H9, but we did total least squares, not least squares. Why is that? There was a really good reason for it, and we'll learn about it in a little bit when we cover total least squares. But least squares estimation, again, when you have a model that is linear in the unknowns, the only thing happening to the unknown parameters is that they're being multiplied by scalar values, and then you're summing up a bunch of terms with the unknowns, no logs, no cosines, no signs being applied to the unknowns. Least squares, assuming two things, that you want to minimize these vertical distances between the model estimation, what you're trying to estimate in the regression and, and the parameter, and that it's quadratic, which gives us this very clean formulation of the quadratic error function. Um, e of the unknowns is equal to the vector norm of some matrix X times the unknown minus something else differentiate, set equal to zero, and solve. You get x transpose x inverse x transpose times that y vector, and you have your solution. Again, this should be in the toolkit of everybody. You should understand the underlying uh, algebra, the underlying linear algebra, the actual geometry of why this works, because the surface that we are minimizing over is a, is a parabola, a paraboloid, or a hyperparaboloid. Um, and it is not perfect. There are problems with least squares. When you have outliers, there are problems. We have, we have some interesting asymmetries. We've actually made assumptions that I haven't even mentioned, but we'll talk about in a little bit. But this is probably the first tool that you will use in regression, and we're going to start building on that as we make our way through the rest of the semester.